One day, while walking in the bamboo forest, an old, childless bamboo cutter named Takatori no Okina came across a mysterious shining stalk of bamboo. After cutting it open, he found inside it an infant the size of his thumb. He and his wife then raised her as their own child and named her Kaguya Hime. Kaguya Hime grew from a small baby into a long-haired woman of ordinary size and extraordinary beauty. But wait, hang on, that's wrong there. I, I get that ordinary size and extraordinary beauty link up well with Ferramosa, because I mean, Celestela is stinking huge, one of the biggest Pokemon ever. But I mean, you can be tall and still be super pretty. I mean, Celestela is quite feminine, beautiful, especially in the context of the classical Japanese depictions of beauty, and long-haired. So yeah, Ferramosa, get out! You've had your time in the spotlight. Yeah, let's stick with just Celestela. I mean, after all, we see it as a baby in the anime, just like in the folktale, and it wears a multi-layered kimono, just like Kaguya, but also, its Japanese name is Tekaguya. So, yeah, it's Kaguya. But now, why the space rocket motif thrown onto this fairy tale character? Like, yeah, that does explain the typing, steel flying. And it also explains the name, it's feminine, so ends with a, uh, and it's celestial steel. But, what? Well, it's because Princess Kaguya came from the moon and eventually returns to the moon. And there's the space travel. So also, that's what it has to do with aliens. All Ultra Beasts have something to do with sci-fi alien tropes, as well as being related to invasive species or invasive things. It's like an alien invasion. And so, a literal spaceship makes this one pretty easy. Celestela also incorporates design elements from Selene, a Japanese spacecraft that orbited the moon from 2007 to 2009. And the Japanese nicknamed it Kaguya, after the princess in the folk Tale. This was the largest lunar mission since the Apollo program, and it helped us learn a lot of new information about the moon. And a lot of our spacecrafts get painted white to help bounce off the sun's deadly laser rays. And that explains why Celestela's shiny color is white like this. But now, why the bamboo? Well, because of bamboo rockets, which are exactly what they sound like, but also because bamboo is an incredibly prolific and expansive species. It is said that when someone plants bamboo in their backyard, they planted bamboo in the whole neighborhood. <laughs> bamboo is often said to be invasive, but when you research it, you find, is bamboo invasive? Bamboo is not invasive. It is misunderstood. And okay, sure, but most people still call it invasive. So as far as this invasive species alien Pokemon motif is concerned, it's all good. It's just like how the Viking kitties have horns, even though Vikings didn't actually have horns, but pop culture says they had horns. So Pokemon being a part of pop culture, you get it. But yes, bamboo isn't technically invasive in most areas because it spreads via rhizomes instead of seeds, and thus it can only spread so far. But still, once you have put it somewhere, it basically never leaves. Kind of like a Celestela that was found in the ground in the anime that had been basically hibernating and slowly growing for 200 years. And then when it blasted off, its thruster fire didn't damage any of the bamboo shoots in the forest, possibly as a nod to the fact that bamboo doesn't really destroy the plants it's with, especially not other bamboos. Though this scene does go kind of against its Pokedex entry, witnesses have seen it burn down a forest by expelling gas from its two arms. Hmm. Well, most species of bamboo are just kind of a nuisance and nothing more. Though there is also the Japanese knotweed, which is basically invasive and superficially resembles bamboo, as they are closely related. And sure enough, Japanese knotweed was introduced in the US in the 1800s in an attempt to stabilize creek and river edges. And to look pretty. But since then they of course have gone out of control, especially in wetlands. Bamboo and its relatives spread so fast because they grow so fast. Some kinds of bamboo grow fast enough that if you listen closely you can hear them growing. Yeah, you can hear a plant grow. But also, if you want to get all philosophical with it, you could see Celestela's space rocket origins as a symbol for humans traveling to space, landing on the moon and other planets eventually, and thus us being the invasive species in those worlds. Humans are the real invasive species! I'm 14 and this is the deepest thing I've ever seen! So here's a Celestela fun fact. It is THE heaviest Pokemon, tied with Cosmo it weighs 999.9 kilograms, or 2,204.4 pounds, and it weighing so much makes sense. I mean, it's steel flying type, and it's huge, and it's a space rocket. How much does your typical space rocket weigh? Oh, that's not that bad. Only 4.5 million pounds. I mean, it's a few massive metal tanks.
tanks filled with dense rocket fuel, of course it's heavy. And it makes our transition to Kartana all the more fun because Kartana is the lightest Pokemon. At 0.1 kilograms, it's tied with Cosmog, Flabebe, Ghastly, and Haunter. Kartana gives paper cuts for days, and most likely resembles the bamboo cutter from the tail, since that is what Kartana does. Cutting, often the same way samurai cut, like your classical samurai bamboo training dummy thingy. Cutting bamboo is what they do. And plus, Kartana even speaks like a samurai in the anime. But backwards. I cut a worthless object. Which, come to think of it, is also a bit of an alien trope, hiding or speaking cryptic messages in our radio waves, but some smart guy or conspiracy nut can unscramble them. Or in this case, just play them backwards. Kartana's name is interesting. On the one hand, it's literally just the Sanskrit word for cutting, Kartana, but it also sounds like it's referring to a katana made from cardstock. Kartana. And a Kurtana is another type of sword, so I guess humanity as a whole just sort of associates these sounds with swords. Kartana's grass steel typing is a reflection of what it is made of. Paper, but alien paper. It's strong and sharp enough to cut through anything, which also gets into yet another alien movie trope. Aliens are invading Earth, and their ships, weapons, or armor are made out of some uber-strong material that is unknown to humans. And thus the humans have no chance of survival. And also given Kartana's size, it also fits into the whole tiny aliens thing. But now we can see in its part of Ultra Space, there are similar looking plants just growing. Kartana is just a plant Pokemon from an alien planet, the same way Oddish is just a living plant Pokemon from Earth. At least Kartana sort of takes these plants and folds them origami style into the shape of a Noshi. You would typically use Noshi to wrap a piece of thinly cut dried meat and give it as a gift of good fortune. And here the Noshi makes up its main body. The limbs then could pull from another bit of paper. The Shikigami are essentially living spirits that can be made by specially folding and cutting paper that you then fill with spiritual power. And this origin explains Kartana Japanese name, Kami Terugi, combining the Japanese words for paper, deity, and sword, Kami are deities. It's a paper sword deity. But question now, is paper an invasive species? This is disgusting. Who no, not really. But as stated, bamboo is, according to many, and it oftentimes is described as having papery leaves. So much so that it is the primary ingredient in various papers. And Celestila and Cartana have such a strong connection already, given their folktale origins and being on the exact opposite ends of extremes. But also, a big reason why a lot of invasive plant species are so dang hard to get rid of is because they're often covered in thorns or spikes, sharp leaves, and all that. They cut and stab when you try to get rid of them, so it's not a stretch at all to say that Kartana is essentially a personification or Pokemonification of that aspect of invasive plants in general. Also, consider litter. Origami is a man-made thing after all. Perhaps the invasiveness about it is just man-made litter. Trash we all leave all over the everywhere, getting into every ecosystem. There is not a single body of water on Earth that is not polluted with microplastics now, and that includes the water in your blood. Isn't that great to think about? So yeah, perhaps it's the idea of humans as an invasive species again. After all, Kartana is the only main Ultra Beast that speaks like humans, albeit in reversed, but also it's the only Ultra Beast with humans in its own little bit of Ultra Space. A unique trainer class at that. The Ultra Forest Carton Boys. It's so weird. Why are they here? Is it another alien trope inducing hallucinations, disguising themselves as people? Well, maybe. In the trading card game, they make it so damage from your Ultra Beast's attacks aren't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokémon, almost as if they are a distraction to your opponent, a trick nullifying their active Pokémon's effects. It's like a disguised alien infiltrating important military or government bases, nullifying their defensive effects from within. It's yet another alien trope, and one that is often paired up with the trope of tiny aliens. The tiny aliens build a human suit, a human mecha, to pilot and infiltrate the human's world. So yeah. This dude's totally an alien. In fact, all of the Ultra Beasts are, and now we've explained each and every one. So be sure to check out each of their videos, but wait, there's more. Oh yes, there was plenty that we glossed over or didn't even mention, and we'll be sure to cover those details in a big video soon. Thanks so much for watching, and never stop using your noggin. Oh. <laughs>